Hello, today I will discuss about the prevention and management of neural tube defects. So, we go to prevention and management. And management of Neural tube defects. The neural tube defect may be prevented about sixty to eighty percent cases by supplementation of folic acid. So prevention by folic acid. intake during pregnancy during pregnancy we have to know that folic acid is very important it prevents neural tube defect formation so that is they should be taken by all pregnant women. Ideally, according to CDC and public health recommendation, all the women during their reproductive years Reproductive year means uh, from 15 to, four to 50 years. Okay. Should take, should take point four, point four milligram of folic acid. Okay, so during their reproductive year, they may be pregnant, may not be pregnant, but throughout their reproductive year from 15 year to 50 years, they should take 0.4 milligram or 400 microgram of folic acid daily. The idea behind is that a lot of pregnancy happen without preparation. A lot of pregnancy are unplanned pregnancy, and uh, and the pregnant woman knows she is pregnant. By this time, neural tube formation and closure time is over, because we know that the neural tube closes, the anterior neuropore closes around twenty fifth day and the posterior neuropore closes around 27 day. So when the pregnant woman knows that she is pregnant, by this time there may be damage to the neural tube. Neural tube may be open, we may get anencephaly, we may get spina bifida occulta, encephalocele or encephal, en, 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 or inencephaly, we may get the spina bifida cystica, here is the meningocele. Spina bifida cystica, this is myelomeningocele. So, this is due to lack of closure of the anterior neuropod for the anencephaly and the encephalocele. For the posterior neuropod, this spina bifida that may happen due to folic acid deficiency. So, folic acid should be taken throughout the reproductive year along with the diet rich in folic acid like that of peas or the or the orange or broccoli green leafy vegetables that should be taken in the diet so that there should not be any type of deficiency in the folic acid so Usual doses is 4.4 milligram 
of folic acid 0.4 milligram of folic acid daily okay that is the recommendation but if the pregnant woman is an she is taking anti-epileptic drug okay or woman taking anti-epileptic drug epileptic drug okay like that of valproic acid carbamazepine phenytoin okay so or she is taking some type of anti folic acid drug like that of methotrexate or maybe some type of antibiotic cotrimexazone so in that situation the daily doses may be 4 mg in lieu of 0.4 mg okay per day and certainly with supplementation of the diet that is rich in folic acid like the peas orange broccoli green leafy vegetables or any other food that is rich in folic acid okay so that is the recommendation for women taking anti-epileptic drug she is taking some type of chemotherapeutic drug like methotrexate she is taking some type of anti-cancer drug or even antibiotic that is the the co-trimexazole in that situation the doses of the folic acid should be 4 mg per day okay also we have some other preventive way preventive way is that folic acid is one type of prevention and she should control the doctor should or the 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 patient herself should also work with the doctor to control the diabetes no additional vitamin a during pregnancy in the form of peel capsule cream okay that should be avoided so there should not be any hypervitaminosis there should not be any hypothermia so these are the way to prevent the neural tube defect so folic acid is the most important point in the men in the prevention of folic acid is the most important point to manage to to prevent the neural tube defect okay so once the once it is diagnosed that the lady is carrying an anencephalic baby or baby with myelomeningocele or meningocele or encephalocele then we the physician should counsel the pregnant woman okay counsel about the outcome of outcome of pregnancy pregnancy not only that also and possible complications of neural tube defect possible complication complications okay complication with neural tube defect we have we know that a lot of complication they will born with intellectual disability, paralysis of muscles of the lower limb, lack of sphincter control, there may be club foot, and also during pregnancy there may be there may be polyhydramnions, excessive fluid in the excessive excessive fluid uh, in the amniotic cavity, a lot of amniotic fluid that is called polyhydramnions. That may be a possibility of neural tube tube defect and the mom should should take should know the outcome of pregnancy and possible complication and she may think about therapeutic abortion therapeutic abortion or termination of pregnancy okay or termination of pregnancy that if it is ethically possible if it is legally possible then it, it is an option termination of pregnancy okay because we know that an encephalic baby without any skull here with very minimum brain stem and brain that baby will not survive more than few days even it may be 
may be still birth it will have still birth or it may die the baby may die immediately after birth okay and there may be complication of pregnancy like polyhedernios there may be it may require cesarean section okay so like that outcome with encephalocele is not also good okay and this is more or less harmless the spina bifida occulta that is not a huge problem except in some individual there may be some type of hydrocephalus or there may be Arnold Chiari malformation but it, it may be harmless but here the meaning of silly here is the the cerebrospinal fluid will, will be here and it's covered by meninges it is very much thin it may be ruptured here the meninges plus the nerve roots here and there is also very soft tissue here covering by meninges and that may be ruptured if the if the nursing is not proper so the child should be child should be in prone position okay not in supine position it is most important and this part should not be dried up it should be soaked with normal saline gauze here there is, there is a way of management there then this patient should be con should have consultation with the with the with the neonatologist certainly neonatologist consultation with pediatric surgeon pediatric neurosurgeon neurosurgeon okay so and certainly good nursing nursing so that this part should be closed as soon as possible that part should be closed okay that should be done by the surgeon and eventually if these are these are managed surgically then when the baby will be a boy or it will grow up in that situation or even from the very beginning they need physical therapy physical therapy even occupational therapy okay so so that's all about the management and prevention of the neural tube defect if you have any question please feel free to ask me please share the information with your friends and please support my channel subscribe me have a nice day bye now